There's not a whole lot of differences, believe it or not, between 2011 and 2024 in the styling of these trucks. One of the things I love about this F-150 Lightning. Anyways, we're going to do a quick walk around on the vehicle. We're also going to hook it up to a trailer and play around with that little trailer assist thingy that Ford has. Never seen that before. Uh, we're also going to take it for a rip. With permission from the owner, my neighbor Rob, uh, he has said put it in sport mode and give it the beans. We're going to be doing just that. So let's take a quick walk around on this Ford F-150 Lightning and see what it's all about. And guys, if this is your first time tuning into Old Car Guy, just know that I don't do electric vehicles at all. I'm not going to say I don't like them. Uh, I don't even want to say I think that they're the way of the future. They, I don't believe that they are. However, we do hot rods. We do suburban, square bodies, older Chrysler vehicles. We do Crown Fix. So this is completely 100% new to me. Never driven an electric vehicle before. Uh, so if you're not yet subscribed to Old Car Guy, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you get notified every time I put up a new video. Let's take a look at this F-150 Lightning. The biggest thing about the F-150 Lightning, in my opinion, is the styling. But Jason, it looks like every other Ford F-150. And that's exactly my point. Just because it's all electric does not mean it has to look weird or ugly or different when it comes to driving an electric vehicle. If you're trying to convert people into electric vehicles, you've got to keep them familiar, in my opinion, with what they feel is normal. So if you want to make an electric pickup truck, don't make it look like this. Make it look like this. This is what people are used to. Give them what they're used to. I do apologize for the wind today. From the side profile, you would hardly even notice that this is the Ford F-150 Lightning. There are subtle hints. Clearly the blue around the F-150 logo here, and the fact that it has a Lightning badge on the back and the T has a little Lightning bolt in it, that's pretty cool. But basically side profile, you'd never know at a glance that this was an electric truck until you jump around to the front with this ugly ass grill and light bar that goes, that's just, that's dumb. It looks weird. Why, why couldn't you have a chrome grill like the newer trucks do or something, or even a gray one that looks like a grill? It's a truck, but at the back, at least on the XLT, you don't get that stripe that goes across the top of the tailgate. Uh, it just, again, looks like a regular truck. Following this thing down the road, you'd likely be none the wiser. There are a few things about this F-150 Lightning. The way that it's optioned makes you scratch your head a little bit. Uh, we'll go over a few of those on the exterior and the interior. But with this particular truck, the XLT, at least here in Canada, uh, I think they were trying to maintain a price point. This thing, base price, $69,995. A few extra giddy-ups on there uh, to bring it up over seventy dollars uh, But at the same token, they had to qualify this truck for the electric vehicle rebate, which was $10,000 Canadian. Not to mention the fact that right now Ford has employee pricing, which gave an additional $7,000 discount on this 2024 20, Ford F-150 Lightning. Which my quick math tells me that if you're going to go out and buy a gas-powered F-150 optioned out like this one, probably going to pay more than that $62,000 or $63,000. I'm guessing. So for my neighbor Rob, this kind of made sense. For argument's sake, we're going to say he paid the same price for this as he would the gas equivalent, but he's not paying for gas. You're paying 14 cents a kilowatt hour to charge it. And you guys have seen probably a dozen or more vehicle reviews on this thing and i'm not going to go over all the details i'm just going to go over some of the things that made me scratch my head or some of the things that i like we've already talked about the styling love the styling except for the grill uh, so let's take a look at a couple of features that i question why they did it this way of course up front you all know that these things have what is uh, notably called the frunk or the front trunk this is not specifically uh, a weird feature that I'm talking about, but I'm getting to it. We've got all kinds of uh, power output here. I think 2,400 watts. You've got 400 pounds of capacity here. You've got uh, plugs in there so you can put some ice. 
Uh, this is pretty cool. You don't have an engine, so uh, you've got lots of space in the front. But with all that fancy gadgetry up front, you don't even get a soft close tailgate for Pete's sake. Not only is it not soft close, is it's not powered either. Back here, you've got another 7,500 something or other kilo, two joules watts back here. Of course, you've got the bottle opener. Uh, you've got the uh, C-clamp trap door there so you can clamp wood down, measuring tape. And this is a neat feature that I've always liked about the Fords uh, is the step uh, with the handle that's kind of hidden away in here as well. So again, fancy power frunk. Uh, virtually nothing in the back, uh, you know, 1950s technology back here. When we come into the interior, uh, yes, you've got a power up and down, forward and back seat here, but manual recline? Like, what's up with that Ford? How much more, really, would it have cost you to make that power as well? That's a, it's just a weird feature uh, in why they did that. And also on the interior, you've got heated seats, leather wrapped steering wheel that is not heated again how come it's probably there maybe it's like bmw you've got to subscribe to that feature on a monthly basis to have it work i don't know of course we've got the hard shell tonneau cover we've got the solid back glass uh we've got cameras all over this thing there's one in the back on the third brake light uh you've got one here on the handle so that you can load up your trailer You've got cameras on each of the mirrors here to give you your 360. And of course, you've got one underneath the front Ford logo here uh, to get your, uh, you know, how close you are when you're parking or whatever you're doing. Let's jump into the interior and take a look at some of these features. As I mentioned before, this is all F-150. Unassumingly, you could hop into this thing and think that you're driving a regular Ford F-150. The door cards are basically the same, the dash is basically the same, and the seats and console, yes, basically the same as a regular F-150. And when you come inside, you don't know that you're not driving a regular F-150, I'm assuming. So why do we need Tesla Cybertrucks that look like dumpsters? I wouldn't buy it just for the looks, even if it was in the market for an electric truck. All your buttons uh, are standard. Even on the steering wheel, the uh, radio and the main display here has volume control knobs, tuning, your AC is all manual, which is awesome. Uh, when we turn this thing on, when the screen comes up, it shows a little Ford electric, uh, Ford lightning truck, and the screen is huge. It gives you all the options for your lane keep assist, your adaptive cruise control, all of that stuff is available here. It does also hook up to Apple CarPlay and uh, Android Auto wirelessly. You've got a nice, neat digital display uh, for your gauge. This truck has just the standard battery, which is 386 kilometers or something like that. Roughly about 250 miles. Uh, because it's the XLT, it's the step above the work truck model that they came out with, uh, but still has just the standard battery. Uh, if you're just commuting back and forth locally, probably all you'll ever need. Road tripping, uh, different story. That's one of my hangups on electric vehicles. As I mentioned before, it does have the, uh, the pro trailer assist here where for those who uh, can't grasp the turning the opposite direction to move your trailer, we are going to test that. This is a feature Ford came out with a few years back to assist people in backing up their trailers. It's also got the integrated brake controller and you've got cameras galore. Just like most modern trucks or cars today, it's, it's all there. Another thing that I commend Ford for doing was maintaining an actual shifter. I've said it before, if you want people to buy electric vehicles, you gotta keep them familiar. You can't make it so friggin' different with how to even do something as simple as shifting it into gear. But this is another feature that Ford has brought over from the F-150s. If you've got a console shift, you can still fold away your shifter and open up your little workbench here so you can run your laptop, have your lunch, do whatever you're going to do here. That is a neat feature. And again, very commendable to Ford for keeping this as an option, even on 
the F-150 Lightning. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go over every single option that these things have. There's plenty of videos out there on it. I am simply doing a uh, reaction video to me. You guys get to see me react to this vehicle and all the feature creature comforts options that it has. Uh, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to get the trailer ball hooked up to it and plug in my trailer and see what we can do with this uh, pro trailer assist thing and backing up a trailer using it versus using your brain. One thing that my 2011 F-150 doesn't have is the backup camera, let alone a separate camera that's going to allow me to connect my ball to my trailer without having to get out and check it 10 different times. That would be an advantage on that 2011. And we'll see how close we can get this thing. Of course, it's beeping at us. It looks like we're there. Let's go take a look and see how close we are. How? Why is that so simple? I only had to get out of the truck once. So I guess from here, the plan is, is we're just gonna simply drive around the building and then try and back the trailer back into the same spot using the uh, trailer assist thing, the pro trailer. I don't have a brain backup dial. Let's go uh, try this out. So it is telling us that we have the, uh, uh, the right turns lamp on the trailer is out or fault but it could just be a bad connection. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't working, but also the range did not change when I plugged the trailer in. Granted, it's just an empty car trailer. We're uh, not going far. We're just gonna run this around the uh, parking lot. Uh, but on the screen here, it's asking me if I wanna use a default trailer. You can set up a trailer based on the dimensions, the weight, the length, all that different things, all that different stuff so that the truck knows that you've got your trailer plugged into it. If you're hauling a different trailer, like maybe a camper trailer, you can set it up in there as well. So we're not gonna play around with any of Rob's settings here because ultimately our only goal here is to try out the uh, Pro Trailer Assist. Let's try it out. So I guess because it had never been set up before, uh, this thing was not calibrated for a trailer. So I spent the next five minutes doing that. So that was a whole lot of nonsense, but I'm assuming once you've calibrated it and it's all set up, it'll probably be fine. So it is telling us that it is ready to go. So now let's get ourselves lined up, put it in reverse and see how this little dial thingy works. She's in reverse. Steering wheel turn by itself. See, in my mind, I'm thinking that I need this thing to turn the opposite way of what it actually needs to turn. And she's gonna go into the bushes. Well, let's go take a look. Yeah, I think we're back where we were. But if you're knowledgeable on how to back up a trailer with your steering wheel, don't use that backup assist because it, it's you're doing everything backwards to the way that you know how to do it. Not an advantageous feature if you already know how to back up a trailer. However, clearly, it works. And for the record, yes, uh, the range dropped significantly to 133 kilometers. Uh, so we're gonna unplug the trailer and see if that goes back up closer to our 250. It took a few minutes for it to kick in, but eventually it did come back to the range once we unplugged the trailer. So 
Now comes the time that I think we've all been waiting for, at least I have, is to get this thing out on the road and drive it for the first time on the streets and hit the highway and see what this sport mode is all about that Rob keeps telling me about. All right, let's go. Okay, so I've got my wife here running camera so that I can kind of be full attention on driving this thing. My first time in a, uh, driving an electric vehicle, my wife's first time being in one. So I'm gonna start it, okay? Other than that little beep, what do you hear? Nothing. So it does tell me that I'm ready down here in the dash. So let's go. What do you think? It's weird. <laughs> no engine noises. It's no so noise. weird. <laughs> and like even out here. Oh, you know what that beeping off. is? My seatbelt. Yeah. So one of the features that electric vehicles have is one pedal driving. And what that means is when you're into the gas or the accelerator, I keep calling it gas. It's not gas at all. When you're into the accelerator, uh, you're accelerating, and when you let off, the, the vehicle automatically will brake for you because the, the the motors, the electric motors, are that's what they'll do. So you don't have to use the brake pedal. That's difficult to get used to. I'm sure you do. I had it on for all of about 10 seconds. I couldn't do it. So we're just going accelerator and brake pedal. You ready? Because I'm going to come on to it. Once we get straightened out here. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I was not expecting the brakes to chirp or the wheels to chirp like that. <laughs> well. Well, that'll wake you up. <laughs> I can't wait to see the playback on that. <laughs> the freaking phone probably. <laughs> Yeah, so we need some air in here. <laughs> that's one of the things that's unassuming about electric vehicles is the power. This thing has 400 and something horsepower. Not a big number considering the V8s have almost the same amount. It's the torque. The torque on this thing is like 700 and change foot pounds. That is race car material. That is Dodge. Hellcat material. Uh, Mustang, Shelby Mustang GT3, what is it called? I don't know. That's race car, I'm telling you. Uh, other than that, and other than the fact that you don't hear an engine or the V8 roar or six cylinder roar, um, it, obviously it drives the same as any other vehicle. The, where the unassuming speed and power comes from is electric motors. They are all torque all the time. That was pretty crazy. We're going to do that again when we get out on the highway so we can actually get some speed um, because the speed limit through here is only 80 kilometers an hour. Actually we're in, in town now so it's only about 50. The whole time that I've had this vehicle for it's been about an hour now the range has gone from 78 to 76 and that was just the whole time it was putting around my yard um, the whole time with the trailer on it and here we are two percent in an hour just with it on literally hardly even moving so once we get out on the highway here we're going to go from a dead stop to floored please be careful and see if i can't see if i can't jason please be careful almost scare myself one more time, my wife is nervous. Uh, I will be careful, I'll make sure I have both hands on the wheel. But we'll get up here a little ways before we uh, before we actually do it. So we're doing 75, I'm gonna speed up to March. She gets up pretty quick. This thing, 
this is a huge vehicle. It's it's a pickup with a huge battery on it, and it's heavy. This thing will do zero to 60 in under five seconds. I don't know what the number is. I'll flash it on the screen when I figure it out. But my soul, she's quick. So we're gonna pull over here and wait for the traffic to go by, and then we're gonna do a launch. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> she sat back in her seat. I was thinking, what are you doing leaning so far ahead? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we gotta do that again. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know if I want to. Can you feel the like that's like a roller coaster ride? That's ter that's wicked. Not terrible, but no, it's like, a little bit scary. When it goes, it just picks up and goes. It only lasts for a few seconds, the G's, right? Yeah. But you could feel like your your heart come up into your chest like or your stomach come up into your chest because there's it's so much so, power it's so quick i don't think i've ever experienced that kind of acceleration except for an airplane yeah and we're in a seven thousand pound truck or whatever they are so as soon as i hit the gas i'll let you guys know when we hit 100 kilometers an hour which is 60 miles an hour it's it's gonna be quick ready one two Three. Oh my god. Oh. Hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Whew. That's almost got I gotta turn the heat up or the AC up. That got me sweat. That's that's freaking crazy. What? Take you're gonna take the exit? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I'm scared. That's enough of that. I won't do that again. But this thing, like again, like most modern vehicles, has a lot of the safety options, the adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot, blah, blah, blah. All that bull crap that you don't get in cars that are probably, you know, 10 years old or older. Um, they're, made, they're made for technology. These things don't have to be as technologically advanced as they are. Oh, see, look. That just took the wheel right out of my hand. Oh, my word. Watch it. Oh, Jason, please. Oh, oh, look, oh it did my. it all on its own. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is going to be a good video. <laughs> but the, all that stuff is, is like standard options. You can turn it all off. Um, but again, as I said right from the very beginning, if you're gonna try and convert gas-powered drivers, vehicle drivers, into electric vehicle drivers, you've gotta keep things as normal and as regular as they're used to as possible uh, because if you make them too techy, some people don't like it. Granted, the people that they're, you know, they're pushing EVs towards are your younger generation, people who are into the tech, who are into all of this stuff, uh, who will get used to it a lot quicker than us Gen Xers, okay? So, at the end of the day, would I own an electric F-150? Probably not, but never say never. This thing is quick, it's got all the features and looks of a regular truck, again, except for that stupid ass grill in the front. Yeah, that's, would I own one? Maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at maybe. Um, <laughs> The pricing, as I mentioned earlier, is ridiculous. Ford employee pricing gives you almost $7,000 off the list price. And here in Canada, or at least in New Brunswick, I'm not sure if it's a whole Canadian thing, $10,000 EV credit. So off of that $70,000 sticker, you're getting $17,000 in credit. You virtually have no excuse to not go out and buy a pickup truck because of the price. Are they expensive? Sure. But guess what? You go up and price out a gas-powered 
F-150 XLT with these features, I guarantee it, it's gonna be more than 70 grand. It's just the way life is these days. With all these credits and sales and everything, it kind of makes sense. You can drive this thing fairly cheap by plugging it in. Sure, I don't think I'm there yet. I like the sound of a V8. I like the roar of the engine. That's just my thing. Will I ever change? Maybe. I don't think it's going to be the day. Although, that's pretty cool. This thing's quick. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. That is the first reaction of this redneck, this guy, who is kind of totally against EVs and probably would never buy one and old school mindset of not changing. Uh, Rob's got a few years on me. That's why we call him Old Man Sawyer. Uh, he seems to be convinced, and after driving this thing, you know, I probably could be convinced at some point in my life. Uh, I do want to thank Rob for letting me use this truck. Uh, Rob's been a longtime friend. I used to work for him way back in the day. Uh, and now that we work next door, uh, he's got a business over here. Uh, we're back and forth. We talk all the time. And he was gracious enough when I presented him the idea of using his truck for a video. Uh, he said, absolutely. Uh, so thanks, Rob, for letting me use it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, of the reaction of how somebody who's never driven one, uh, you know, takes to the first time. Once again, if you're not yet subscribed to Old Car Guy, make sure you are subscribed. Hit that bell notification. That way you get notified every time I put up a new video. Also, from now until the end of the month, we've got nine days left. You make a purchase on oldcarguy.com, use the promo code OCG15, you get 15% off and you get entered in to win a grand prize package. And if you wanna see that, I'll leave it in the end cards uh, or up here so you guys can take a look and see what we are giving away. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys, God bless. Let's do it again in the next one.